hopefully, hopefully, my computer doesn't crash today. I apologise for those of you who, who were here two weeks ago when my computer crashed midstream and my attempted fix did actually uh, uh, fix, appears to have fixed the problem. Whatever I did appears to have fixed the problem, but it took like an hour to sort out, so I apologise for that. Also, I was trying to keep chat up to date with what I was doing, but it turns out I was shadow banned because I was using a VPN uh, and my messages weren't coming through to the chat room, so that felt wonderful. Um, but my name is Ryan, or Comrade Bubbles, as you can see beneath my face. Uh, and as you can see to this side of my face, uh, this is Behind the Screen, a content creation stream uh, where I where I discuss how to write content creation for various uh, Onyx Path game lines. This, the topic of this show, of this season being Trinity Continuum Core, and that will necessitate, as usual, an explanation of what Trinity Continuum is. Um, but also, as it also says to that side of my face, uh, just general GM tips about running games, about creating stories, whatever you want to talk about, really. The content creation is merely just something for me to do uh, in the downtime while not discussing other things. Uh, I will try to keep it on track with Onyx Path games. I can't guarantee it'll always be, that it will always be Onyx Path material that I refer to, but I do try to keep it on, tr on, the, on track to that. Uh, important p p important thing to note, I do not speak for Onyx Path, nor is this project official material, as far as I know. All views and opinions expressed on my own in this material will be available to buy on the StoryPath Nexus. Uh, I'm merely a grateful fan with a platform. One day that coveted purple name on Discord shall be mine! Whatever I did appears to have fixed the problem. It's not an encouraging statement. On Stabodeus, you and I both know uh, that's like 90% of tech problems get sorted by whatever I did appears to have fixed it. Whether coding or hardware, uh, software or hardware side of things. Uh, I am uh, disabled. Uh, I do experience muscle spasms that can affect the muscles of my jaw and my throat and my tongue. I don't know why I'm pointing my tongue for my throat. I meant to say tongue. Whatever. Uh, it can um, lead to a stuttering or slurred speech. I have a stammer anyway, so it doesn't help matters. Um, I am aware that I talk pretty quickly. I try to keep my accent kind of neutral just because I have a neutral accent, uh, but if it becomes an issue, please ask me to slow down um, and I will try to do so. I do also struggle with multiple trains of thought, so I will try to finish one before going on to the next, but if you raise a point in chat, which I am constantly monitoring as I am a moderator as well, uh, and this is a solo show, uh, I, will, uh, I will try to address the fact that I've seen your comment uh, before and then loop back around to it. Um, also, because I realise that it's not terribly immediately obvious, uh, I will accept any pronoun. Uh, I'm gender fluid. Uh, he, she, they. Um, I do use they on the Onyx Path Discord server pu purely for... I think I use it on there. I do. Uh, do I? I can't remember anymore. Um, I do purely for visibility. I, I will accept any, any pronoun. Uh, so that's all that. So before we get to the actual show itself, YouTube, you're probably aware of this by now. You can probably skip forward like 10, 15 minutes. But I do recap the Monday meeting notes for people who may not be aware of them. Um, so uh, the Monday meeting notes are the best place to go for updates about Onyx Path in general. Uh, I've got to find the right window now. Um, this week is uh, opens up with how Scion 2E came about last last um. Last week was Scion 1E, or 1st edition if you prefer. This week is how Scion 2nd edition came about. It doesn't necessarily touch on Trinity Continuum, because uh, Scion 2E and Trinity Continuum, I guess 2E, uh, kind of were developed at the same time using the story path system. Uh, so there's some pretty sweet Scion related art, uh, as well as just a discussion of the history of, of, of how the game came to be. Uh, Important updates to note, however, the next crowdfunding campaign will be Exalted Exigence, which is another splat book for Exalted 3rd Edition. Uh, that will be on Indiegogo rather than Kickstarter, purely because the waiting time for Kickstarter is for Kickstarter approving projects right now is extremely long. Uh, and so Onyx Path have moved over to Indiegogo to get that sorted. They have done the crowdfunding campaigns on Indiegogo before, well, at least one of them, I believe... It was Technocracy Reloaded for M20. Um, so there is a precedent for Onyx Path using Indiegogo. They've got some experience using that platform. Uh, important to note, Indiegogo, unlike Kickstarter, 
Uh, Indiegogo charges you when you pledge. Kickstarter charges you after the campaign ends. Uh, on Indiegogo, if the campaign does... Uh, specifically, Onyx Path have set it so that the... Um, the campaign is all or nothing. Like, tie the funds or it doesn't. There's no gradual fundraising here. Uh, if the campaign does not fund, you will get your money back. Uh, you can set it on Indiegogo so that, like, it's an ongoing fundraising thing. Uh, that is not the case. If you pledge, your money is taken, and if the campaign does not f f fund, you get the money back. No matter what anyone says. That's how it's set up. That's how its path are doing it. Uh, however, they will still be using Backer Kit if you prefer to go through Backer Kit. Uh, June 10th to 12th of... Yeah, June the 10th to the 12th, which, uh, if you're here in the UK, is a bank holiday weekend. Uh, for our Queen's Jubilee, if you care about that kind of thing, uh, is the third Onyx Path virtual convention. There is a whole bunch of panels and games being run across a couple of Twitch channels uh, for that, as well as uh, con games being set up on uh, startplaying.games. And links to all this stuff are in the Monday meeting notes, so if you are, in, you are interested, I highly recommend you checking out the Monday meeting notes and scrolling to the relevant page, uh, re relevant section of the page. In, there's like a graphic schedule of uh, a timetable of, of, of all the panels and games and stuff uh, all down in the convention section uh, a note on the convention games uh, those are charged they are not free you do have to pay for them 50% uh, of the ticket price goes to the GM 40% of the ticket price goes to charity the Badana group and 10% goes to the platform uh, Scion 2e remains on sale this week uh, it is the core books i believe this week uh hero origin and a couple of other things and then uh next week i assume will be the rest of the scion range i'm not an official representative i'm not this is not gospel do not take this as truth uh, this is pure hypothesis uh but hey if you're interested in getting into scion and you haven't yet right now you can pick up the core rule books for 10 percent of their listed price pdf only but but there we go um, if you're also interested in Scion, there's a story path showcase being run right now uh, that is a, a whole lot of fun, uh, as well as a pathcast with a two-parter um, discussing Scion. Uh, and then Travis Legg and Rich T uh, run the Monday meeting through through the Crossroads Constant Adventure that Rich T has that they have been uh, uh, writing for uh, as a convention playtest for um, VirtualCon. Uh, I've touched on Exigence, uh, touched on the Pathcast, a uh, really quick rundown of, of what's on the channel this week, um, for those of you who are just tuning in. So now, 9am-ish EDT, this show, congratulations, you've made it. Uh, noon EDT, Story Path System, Lunch and Crunch, uh, I'm not seeing what topic that's covering this week, but that is Danielle Webb and, Danielle Lawson, Lawson and Eddie Webb, sorry, um, talking about the story path system and their anecdotes being long time like developers and, and writers and stuff so that's always always fun uh today 6 p.m edt they came from camp murder lake story path showcase game uh wednesday 5 p.m edt uh, trinity continuum aberrant atomic youth season finale wednesday 9 p.m edt mage the that's a typo uh ascension walking into shadow i'll have to remember to poke someone about that uh friday 6 p.m edt deviant the renegades twilight network Friday, 7 p.m. EDT, Mage the Awakening into the West. I believe one of those is not on the Night's Path Twitch channel. Uh, I can't remember which one. Uh, Friday, 11 p.m. EDT, They Came from Camp Murder Lake, Vorpal Tales. Uh, Saturday, 9 p.m. EDT, Hunter the Vigil, The Black Royal Regatta Decennium. Sunday, 3 p.m. EDT, Sound Godsend. And then Sunday, 8 p.m. EDT, Trinity Continuum Adventure by Devil's Look Gaming. Uh, I believe that, that Devil's Look Gaming one starts at Trinity Continuum Adventure, which, if you don't know, uh, it's written with an exclamation mark, so you have to pronounce it that way. Um, and then we'll do some time stuff and end up in Monday. Uh, virtual Tabletop, kind of the latest news is still that you can now play Scion uh, through Roll20 with compendium uh, information and uh, couch sheets. Uh, don't look for Demigod material on there, because the book's not out yet, so the couch, the couch sheets don't support Demigod uh, right now. Uh, what, what else, what else, what else? 
There are some Scarred Lands and Pugmire PDFs on sale because uh, of a D&D sale on Drive-Thru RPG. So if you're interested in Scarred Lands and Pugmire, please check that out. Um, the uh, Onyx Paths Redbubble store will uh, be selling uh, official 10th anniversary merch uh, th from this Wednesday. So if you want to celebrate it, go ahead and enjoy that. Uh, and the first Trinity Continuum Aberrant Novella Panopticon will be available for for purchase, PDF, ebook, and print on demand uh, on Wednesday from Drive Through RPG. On top of Onyx Scarred Lands Pugmire Sale includes community content too. Well, there you go. Go and buy mine. Or don't. It's up to you. I'm just saying, if you happen to purchase People of the Snow, it's got my name on it, Ryan Wielden. Uh, I would be grateful if that's on sale. If it's not on sale, why not purchase it anyway? It's not very, very expensive. Uh, on top of the virtual convention, that was a horrible shill, but thank you for letting us know, Alan. Um, I'm also involved in one of Alan's projects. Go and buy... Uh, things called Patrons of the Scarred Lands. I should really know this. Pogmire is the dogs doing dog things. Yeah, Pogmire is uh, dogs adventuring. Um, kind of anthropomorphic, uplifted dogs. Uh, Monarchy Zamao is cats in the same universe. And Pirates of Pogmire, uh, which I also created some community content for, uh, adds in uh, birds and lizards, if you would prefer to play a bird or a lizard. And then Squeaks in the Deep, I think, is out now or soon. And that's uh, Rats and Mice. <laughs> Dogs playing poker and going on adventures. Yep. Uh, if you are interested in Pugmire, by the way, um, I think it went up on the Ice Path YouTube channel. Uh, I did run a Pugmire adventure for the, for the Ronix Path. Uh... Now I'm curious because I, I keep meaning to, pr to promote it and then keep forgetting to promote it. You know what? I don't have the time right now. I'll, I'll keep doing this in the background while, while, while talking nonsense. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, so if um, Ice Path Virtual Convention isn't to your liking but you are in Scotland or can get to Scotland, specifically Edinburgh, uh, 27th, 28th of August, 2022 is Tabletop Scotland, where there will be at least four Onyx Pathers. Uh, that's the, that's what the, that's what the Monday meeting note says. Four Onyx Pathers. Also, hello, Arthur Poet. I forgot to say hello. Uh, running games and sitting on panels, live and in the room with you. It's an in-person con, if you are comfortable with that right now. Um, and then, as I say, there is a whole list of... Uh, A whole list of a whole slew of graphics, if you if you like the word slew, uh, for panels, ti panel times, and game times. Uh, yes, I can in fact confirm that if you if you are intrigued by the idea of Pugmire but not entirely sold on it, you can in fact watch myself run a couple of people through the um, through the jump start. Uh, the link I've just posted in the chat room will take you to part one of two. Part 2 is also on YouTube. This was a year ago, you understand. Um, there we go. Uh, development updates, however, the Trinity Continuum Anima Jumpstart is in final drafts. One of the two, uh, because Anima gets two. Uh, making History Modern, which is a way of modernizing myths for Scion. That's a tasty bit. This manuscript approval. The Dragon Jumpstart for Scion's in editing. Exigent Trinity Continuum Adventure. Ex Exalted 3rd Edition Adversaries. Uh, a Werewolf 20th Apocalyptic Record and Trinity Continuum Aeon Mission Statements are on Art Direction. In layout, we've got Aberrant, uh, Trinity Continuum Aberrant Novas Worldwide, Sign Masks of the Mythos, and Sound Dragon. Improving Dead Man's Rust, which I backed Dead Man's Rust and I, I got the backer PDF through the other day, and that is as a good looking book. Um, there is some more I keep me to send in, but I don't know if that's closed now. Anyway, uh, that's improving, as are the virtual tabletop assets. For that, uh, Sion Demigods in indexing, which is hype. Uh, and then at press, we have Sion Demigod, Errata's closing. Squeaks in the Deep screen, the book, and bookmarks are in various stages of at press. The Par Paranormalist's Handbook, uh, Print on Demand Proofs on the Way, Hunter the Vigil 2E and Screen uh, various are in a couple of different stages. Um, Tales of Depravity has got the dreaded page XX um, being updated. Uh, Mage 20th Operative's Dossier is awaiting errata. The Tarat novella, which is the other Trinity, Continu Trinity Continuum Aberrant novella, that Print on Demand Proofs on the Way, and uh, Trinity Continuum Assassins is awaiting errata. 
as a very rushed overview of the Monday meeting notes. You might also be thinking to yourself, or you might not, because it would be weird for you to be thinking to yourself, Ryan, because that's my name, might not be your name, uh, but hey, where are the where are the rest of the projects? They surely have more projects than that in the works. And uh, the rest of the projects can be found right here, boom, just like that. Um, overall timeline has now been relegated to the monthly roundup to, to cut down information dumped in the Monday meeting notes. Uh, so the Monday meeting notes now only include the, include, uh, why, why I say it like that? I don't didn't quite know. Now only include the projects that have updated uh, or that have moved along in the process. So I may say our occasionally, I talk with my hands a lot and my microphone is like right in front of my face. Uh, so I catch it every now and then. Um, there we go. So that's the Monday meeting notes. I'm going to hydrate and then we're going to get into the show proper. Before I do, before we do start properly, actually, um, I cannot stress enough that this is a community show. So please do uh, ask questions, uh, criticize constructively, hopefully, for low self esteem. Um, seek clarification. Whatever you want to do, just interact, keep the ball rolling, keep things moving. Um, the the content is here for me, to, uh, uh, just as something for me to talk about when there's nothing else to talk about, really. Uh, I do have the keyboard behind the microphone again, so hopefully that will cut down on uh, keystroke noise. And it's not a mechanical keyboard anyway, um, so that helps also, I guess. But I, I've made it as quiet as I can, so I apologize if you don't like the sound of keystrokes. I personally don't care for it myself uh, in streams. However, let's get started. Uh, that is the wrong document. However, I will... You know what? No, I'll do that, I'll do, do that in a moment. So, uh... Standard opening. What is Trinity Continuum? Um, someone in chat mentioned that they don't play Trinity. They don't. Enti they are not necessarily sure what it is. I'm going to stop looking at the microphone and look at the webcam. Uh, Trinity Continuum is a game line that covers a, at this point, quite a wide genre. You know, I'll put chat where I can see it uh, for this. Uh, quite a wide genre um, pool, actually. Uh, so Trinity Continuum Core, which is what this document will supplement, is uh, default setting, it, its default setting, sorry, is is modern day. And it's a skill-based system that uses a dice pool to calculate success or failure. Um, doesn't use d20, uses a handful of d10, and it's very satisfying to roll them. Um, and the core rulebook is primarily aimed at kind of like action, espionage, thriller, that kind of gameplay. Um, not the music video, the, the, the genre. Uh, other game lines in the Trinity and Continuum do include, you'll have heard them, Adventure, which is like 1930s pulp action adventure, uh, Aeon, which is far future science, uh, psychic stuff, Aberrant, which is near future superheroes, uh, Anima, which is cyberpunk, and also fantasy, because there's a VR MMO in the game. Um, so you've got technically two different genres of the price of one there. That's value. Uh, but by and large, Trinity the core rulebook for Trinity Continuum, or Trinity Continuum Core, or TC Core, as I'm going to refer to it from now on because it's easier to say, is modern day and you play as mostly people that you would meet on the street. Uh, it does include rules for talents, uh, which are uh, people who are supernaturally lucky or gifted in some way with minor weird superpowers um so it, for an example in the story path showcase that i took part in uh, for trinity continuum uh my character could punch through walls without really caring about having punched through a wall um which was my first time playing a brawler and it was a lot of fun uh, but you, your character sheet gives you a list of attributes and skills, and each dice roll is usually a pairing of an attribute and a skill. Uh, it's incredibly flexible, there's a lot of onus on the player to go, hey, this is the dice pool I'd like to roll, and this is why, rather than the story guide telling you what dice pool to roll. So if you if you have a relatively open mind about such things, you can you can generally get away with rolling the biggest pool possible on your sheet. Um, but it uses a system of, as I say, it uses a dice pool. Um, you roll a number of d10 equal to the dots on your sheet, plus any any extras. 
and a result of an uh, NTC course specifically, as well as, I think it's Aberrant? Anyway, we'll go back to TC Core for now, because that's what the show's about. Um, a result of an 8, 9, or a 10 is a success. So you might end up... I mean, on average, that's going to give you one success for every three dice you roll. It's probability. Um, 10s, you re-roll. Uh, you count that as a success, and you re-roll it, because uh, you might get another success. If you get another 10, you count that as another success, and you re-roll it again until you start rolling 10s. Um, and then with those successes, you buy off the difficulty of whatever you're trying to do. So a classic example is you're trying to vault a brick wall. And people on YouTube or longtime viewers of the show, because it's been going for 57 episodes, so thank you for people who've been here that long, um, will be sick of this brick wall analogy by now. Uh, you're trying to climb a brick wall. It's difficulty two, let's say. Uh, and you roll four successes. Uh, with those four successes, you buy off the difficulty of two, so you've succeeded at the action. Uh, you get over the wall. What's the what's the saying? No fuss, no muss. I know things. Um, on top of that, to add some uh, mechanical complexity to give more bells and whistles to to tweak and to add more verisimilitude beyond just hey, it gets harder. Uh, there's a system called complication and enhancement. Enhancement is um, automatic successes. As long as you get one success on the roll, regardless of whether you succeed at the action, just a single success, uh, if you have anything that gives you enhancement, say like three enhancement, you get three automatic successes on the roll. Uh, complications kind of the... It doesn't subtract successes. Complication adds to... adds an additional layer to the difficulty in a way. Um, so going back to the brick wall example, now there's a broken glass on top of the wall and that adds complication too um, so you've got four successes from the original roll we're ignoring enhancement for this example uh, you buy off two difficulty with your two successes and you have two successes left you can choose to just clear the wall and do it really like to do it in a way that looks really cool um, or you can choose to buy off the complication in this example clearing the wall and looking really cool when you do it without buying off the complication you'll probably take an injury condition as you tear up your hands or you can clear the wall uh, you can buy off the, com the the complication which gives you no successes remaining but you don't tear your hands open on the glass because you've effectively negated that problem um, it's important to note that a complication can never remove the success um, a complication should never be a different way of failing the role um, it's exactly what the name suggests. It, it complicates your success in some way. That's a very extremely rushed overview of Trinity Continuum. And if anyone is familiar, if anyone's not played it, but is familiar with uh, the Storyteller system, the Powers Chronicles of Darkness and the World of Darkness uh, games, um, to some extent, uh, it, the Story Path is a spiritual successor, slash direct successor, I guess, I don't know, uh, to that system. Again, I'm not an official representative of Voice Path. Views and opinions of my own. Uh, so that's what Trinity. That's what Trinity Continuum is in a nutshell. Please do, as I say, please do um, seek clarification if you if you particularly need any. I'm just going to hydrate and then we'll get onto the the bulk of the stream as we do more of a dive into. the document you see on screen, really. I'm also going to zoom in. No, I'm not. I can't zoom in just yet. I need to do something else first. I need OBS open so I can monitor things. Often the only time, uh, only thing, only way I know that the stream has crashed is if OBS's levels don't move. Uh, so what is this document? This document, as you can see, is called Horrors of the Continuum, and it is a horror-themed supplement for, Trini for TC Core. Um, because I like horror and it uh, doesn't, by default, give you horror stuff. I can word good, promise. Uh, so, so far, um, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm just gonna, come, like, I start talking, I started, the, the first episode of the season um, and the opening set chapter of this book is safety tools. Um, we're on psychological horror now on Stable Deus. Um, 
but I spent two hours just talking about safety tools and the importance thereof. And yes, safety tools are important in horror games, but I mean they're important important in any in any game. Horror games are just more likely to contain topics that some people might find triggering. Um, so I've mentioned safety tools. Uh, and a couple of I've mentioned a couple of safety tools you can use as well as uh, like a brief discussion uh, about about them. Uh, then we started, as you can see on the left hand side, with body horror, and I defined body horror, gave some advice about writing body horror scenarios, and then a couple of scene wide mechanics, a couple of skill tricks, skill tricks being ways in which player characters can use skills in ways that not necessarily all player characters can. Uh, a couple of edges, which are analogous to merits from the storyteller system. Um, and then gifts, which are talents, the um, the minor supernatural, supernatural, superheroic abilities that some PC characters can, can access if you're playing um, one of the inspired. Um, now, with the edges and the gifts, I have tried to keep things as simple as possible with one pertaining to um, like an active engagement with the genre that you're exploring and one with more of a passive engagement with the genre that you're exploring. So in this in the body horror section for example, bone weapons is definitely is more is an active engagement because you're literally changing your body uh, horrifically for for benefit and then uh, horrific mean is a, a more of a passive one just because you're more leveraging the horrors that you have witnessed um, and the effect that has had upon your body uh, then we discussed some cosmic horror which naturally there's some overlap with cosmic and psychological horror uh, i did the same thing there mechanics tricks edges gifts uh, disaster horror I will be coming back to because um, I reached the disaster horror section just as the war in Ukraine happened and I didn't feel like the right time to be discussing that kind of thing. Um, so then we went on to folk horror instead uh, and, and how you can do folk horror and finally we're on psychological horror. now. Last time I did a full stream we defined psychological horror I recapped the advice given in the cosmic horror section about uh, how to be as sensitive as possible um, as psychological horror necessarily does involve some exploration of mental illness in most cases. Uh, so to recap those, please do your research um, to make sure that you're not portraying an exaggerated version of the symptom of mental illness that a character may be suffering from. And uh, do not name the mental illness that your character, that a character may be suffering from. This often leads to research into and portrayal of all of the symptoms and effects of that illness. In most cases, someone suffering from that illness does not exhibit everything associated with it, and you will, in all likelihood, portray the character in a damaging manner. Instead, refer to point one above and portray one or two symptoms that could relate to a particular mental illness but are applicable to several. As the vast majority of mental illnesses, there's like a, a there is a web of symptoms they share, and it's you know, difficult for mental health professionals to ascertain what your combination of symptoms can be indicative of. Uh, however, um, as, as 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 I mentioned, there is crossover with psychological horror and other genres of horror, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to bear in mind. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm not just going to recap what I wrote last time. I mean, regarding disaster horror, that's fair. Yeah, it kind of is. Has Ari reviewed this section? No, I'm going to ask Ari to review the material once it's... Um, once I've gone over it again. Maybe not like final draft, but like proper foot. This is like, this is draft zero. This is me just writing it down. And then I'll go through and, and edit it and change stuff around off stream. Uh, and then um, one of my friends, I guess, uh, is a uh, mental health professional. Um, so. There we go. Um, yes, I'm going to zoom in so that y'all can see what I'm working with. That's too far for me. I, I have to balance it between you being able to see on screen and me being able to actually use it. Uh, so we're going to use the definition from Wikipedia here to, to direct our optional mechanics, skill tricks, edges, and gifts. Uh, but psychological horror often has a particular focus on mental, emotional, and psychological states to frighten, disturb, or disturb 
or unsettle its audience. It often uses mystery elements and characters with unstable, unreliable, or disturbed psychological states to enhance the suspense, drama, action, and paranoia of the setting and plot, and to provide an overall unpleasant, unsettling, or distressing atmosphere. Um, it's very easy with psychological horror to be like, I'm going to gross you out, but that's body horror. Um, or, you know, just go for the, for the jump scares, or for... Um, beings from beyond the mortal world, which is cosmic horror. Psychological horror at its core derives purely from being unsettled and the, the feelings of distress that, you come, that come from that. And like, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I've run distressingly few horror games, uh, but I do have an active interest in the genre. Uh, and psychological horror is one of the hardest ones to maintain the atmosphere that you need. Um, I discuss atmosphere elsewhere in the document, um, and if you've missed that, it is available on YouTube. Uh, so, the optional mechanics that we're going to be dealing with are ones that I'm hope, I'd, I'd hopefully will, you know, um, help to maintain the uh, the atmosphere that you can't necessarily trust what your characters can. Can, can see or perceive, let's say perceive around them because that covers all the senses um, and various other things. So uh, I only have one idea for an optional mechanic. I'm going to be honest with you all chat. I only have the one idea. So while I'm typing it up, hopefully I'll hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll have another one. Um, I'm very much a one idea person, I will be honest. Uh, so optional mechanics and then heading three. Uh, do I Do I usually have little No, not necessarily, although I may add little prompts under these headings. Uh, for now, though, uh, heading three goes there, and we call this Unreliable Sensors. Uh, whenever a uh, character makes a roll, uh, Because there's no like perception check or anything, so um, I, I I will admit I primarily work in 5e because uh, I have a Patreon, an active Patreon campaign producing 5e material, and I do that on Mondays. And so the last kind of writing thing I've usually done before this show is 5e related, and that that's what my brain is still like in gear for. So it does take a little bit of time for me to get out of the 5e mindset. Um, and to dealing with, with 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 TC stuff. So language that I would use in 5e, I'm trying to avoid because I'm trying to mirror the language of the tri of the Trinity Trinity Continuum uh, book. Um, so I apologise. I I appreciate that it's not going to be like the best thing in the world to watch for a couple of minutes uh, as I try to get out of that um, mindset. And you can you can really uh, you can usually tell if someone does write 5e or is like. I guess not just spe specifically. Fi you can usually tell someone writes for one game system more than any others because, by the way, they phrase things. Um, let's see. Let's say whenever a character had found psychological hard to be some of the most difficult horror subgenres to run as well because of the amount of preparation required to portray potentially multiple sets of details for the same descriptions. Exactly, because like it's going to be different for every character, and. Um, some psychological horror as well uh, will almost kind of necessitate gaslighting characters um, as you describe things differently to each character. So that's something to be aware of. Um, and obviously, you should never be playing, you should never be using horror to this extent anyway without player buy in and, and say so. Um, sure, you can draw on elements of it carefully but you this supplement and the mechanics here are intended to be like yes we're playing a horror game uh, so you shouldn't be using them without um, player say so really um, hope player makes a role to locate clues or otherwise um, hang on there's a there's an edge isn't there 
that has the wording I'm looking for. I think there is, I could be wrong. But hey, at least now there's like this, this calming, slightly eerie, hopefully slightly eerie music in the background while I'm quiet and trying to scan through PDFs as quickly as possible. Or otherwise, use the sensors to gain a wider understanding of the environment. There we go. I'll go with that wording. Why not? Hopefully the microphone isn't picking up too much keystroke noise. Uh, whenever a character makes a roll to locate clues or allies, use their senses to gain a wider understanding of the environment. Um, they uh, That roll has a level 2 complication. Uh, if this complication is not, bo is not bought off, sorry. Uh, psychological horror really revolves around the character, so stripping them down to essence really helps shape the narrative. Almost definitely, yes. Um, and it's definitely one of those. I mean, I've I've run I've run it as a one shot before, and it was okay. But it's definitely one of those genres that because it does cross over with other um, subgenres well, uh, really well. It, it's definitely a genre to more. Um, like sprinkle liberally, let's say, because uh, it, it you definitely need to understand the characters uh, to some degree beyond just like surface level to really get the emotional weight to it. Um, if this complication is not bought off, the character learns additional superfluous information uh, in the form. Uh, you know what? I'll have a rider. Um, if multiple characters are attempting this role at the same time, uh, it is recommended they all learn different information. Uh, because, you know, they're seeing, they're experiencing different things because of the nature of what's going on. Uh, if this role is related to, um, is it covering? I think it's called identifying, actually, not locating. I think it's identifying a clue. Uh, where's the procedural section in the rule book? Oh, finding. There we go. Uh, to finding clues, if this role is related to finding clues, uh, the superfluous information is. Uh, there's a type of clue here. Uh, what was it? Interpretation, maybe? So, the way clues are handled in TC Core. Uh, core clues you always find. Because they're, you know, story relevant. There's no fail state. You will always find the information that you require. Um, within reason. Like, there are some... There, are, there may be requirements. However, uh, for additional information... Um, that's when you get the, uh, the the potentially erroneous clue. Ah, raw information. There we go. So you just get, like, the raw input. Um, uh, it's counted as raw information. Um, let's say, you know, I'll say raw information or interpretation. Uh, 
because uh, when you when you make the roll, you spend successes to buy different kinds of clue. Um, I guess I haven't really talked about investigations all that much here, although I probably should have done when I handled cosmic horror. Uh, so, as as I mentioned, there are two 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 two, two kinds of clue. Um, core clue and alternative clue. The core clue is the one that you find, um, I air quotes, automatically. Because um, they're the ones that continue the story. Uh, alternative clues are ones that you sp like. You look for to get a better, better understanding of the situation. Um, you, you automatically get one success anyway. Um, and then... You uh, you put one die aside as an automatic success, and then you roll the, you roll your you roll your pool. Sorry. Uh, so there are a couple of different kinds of of cl alternative clue. There's raw information that that counts as uh, uh what one one success provides one piece of raw information, and that's just like. This is what you find. Uh, one success can also provide interpretation, um, which is a further exploration of uh, some raw information you possess, or um, or of the core clue. Uh, a question and answer. Uh, you um, get one question per success in the role. Uh, and that allows you, a, a player to ask a question about the clue. Again, one per roll. Uh, if the question isn't useful, the, G, the, the story guide, the SG, uh, should provide alternative information instead. Um, one success will also net you a player-created clue, where you create your, where you yourself, as the player, create a raw fact about that clue, subject to story guide approval. Uh, and then also um, uh, delayed clue information when a clue isn't relevant right now but becomes obvious later on uh, and then you um, you make note of how many successes you've you've uh, you've set, set aside for that as well as a descriptor about kind of what you've set them aside for and then you can you can kind of spend those later to get the information then. Uh, you can also use uh, successes from that role as enhancement on roles that information would aid. And that has like a time time limit on it, but... Uh, you know, kind of makes sense. You can't just bank a success for three sessions down the line. Uh, alternatively, successes can be used as a discount to dramatic editing at the rate of three successes per um, point. Um, so dramatic editing is a thing that talents can do uh, where you can kind of alter the world in minor ways uh, and by, by spending um, inspiration. Uh, and yeah, you spend three successes to, to lower that by one, or six successes lower by two, etc, etc, etc. You can also bank the successes um, for, uh, for a future edit, which is pretty neat. But that's what, that's kind of what that's all about, and there are different ways you can go around finding clues, obviously, in different dice pools and, and whatnot. But uh, that was just a, a, an explanation of what I mean by um, when I say it's counted as raw information or interpretation. Um, so that's that's that. So that's that's kind of hyping up the you can't trust your senses. Uh, hyping up. That's an exploration of, of how you could model not being able to trust your senses fully in this kind of scenario. Uh, what else would what what else what else, what else makes sense? Because I don't want to just say hey hallucinations and. Or, hey, compulsive behavior, or psychotic break time, because those are actual real problems that actual real people suffer from. Um, and as someone who does have compulsive traits, uh, 
you know, it's not fun. And I don't like it when people make fun of uh, OCD in media because, you know, I do suffer from it from some days. Have bad days, have better days. Uh, so. What other... Sorry, I'm just going to stay more, I think. Uh, what other things does psychological horror involve? Unreliable sensors is kind of loosely touching on hallucinations in that you're just getting more than you need. Some of it not necessarily real. Um... Everything that I can think of ties back to unreliable sensors now. Gosh dang it, why am I like this? Uh, paranoia I've kind of already covered with sense of isolation. Uh, on the definition, you fool. Uh, frighten, disturb, or unsettle its audience. Mystery elements, characters with unstable, unreliable, or disturbed psychological states to enhance the suspense, drama, action, and paranoia of the setting of plant to provide an overall unpleasant, unsettling, or distressing atmosphere. Have an idea, but it's a sensitive one. Okay, I will. You know, I'm happy to discuss it because that's what the point of the show is. But anyone watching or listening, please bear in mind that a sensitive subject may be about to be discussed. Oh, is likely about to be, at least you'll see it on, on, in, the in the chat box, if nothing else, whilst I'm thinking. Um, unfortunately, I think, you're, I think the Happy Mile Cave Intro runs deep where mental issues are more of a funny quirk. Oh gosh, yeah, fish mouth and things like that can just... They need relegating to, to history's trash fire where they belong. Like... Yeah, it's some, I'm not going to deny, some of my personality traits that stem from mental health problems. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that from the outside they are funny, but I don't find them funny. I find them genuinely upsetting some days, and other days there are an inconvenience at best, let's say. And I certainly don't want to be laughed at because of them. I mean, no one should be laughed at anyway, but there's, there's a whole thing. Right there. That's a, that's a can of worms I'm not willing to open. Because I will get angry. And I'm trying to provide a welcoming and relaxed viewing experience. I say, having set out to make a vaguely unsettling back, um, audio track for the show. Um, I had an idea then as well. So... Uh, altered states are temporary alter your mental attributes by adopting an altered mental state with the benefits and detriments that brings. So I was just trying to make that that bigger, and that is uh, that is a great emote. Um, that's definitely something I consider unstable. That's that's more of an edge, like being receptive to an altered state. Um, I'm also trying not to like name things in a way that relies on tropes. So like I could name because I've got an idea and I could e easily name it the whispers because it's it is kind of playing on auditory hallucinations um, uh, as a, like a further evolution of unreliable sensors. Um, I guess never alone. It's not terribly damagingly tropey as a name. It's super generic, but it does convey. Yeah, let's go with that. So, uh, uh, never alone. Oh, hang on, I need to do like a little explanation of the narrative here, don't I? Uh, the world or I, I like to include, I'm, 
I'm going to try to add these little narrative bits uh, where I can, um, because I feel like they're a good way of introducing the idea of the mechanic in in fiction and then explaining the mechanic mechanically. Mechanic, I guess, for third times the charm. Uh, the world around the characters is unsteady and in flux. Uh, oftentimes changing to reflect the observer. Which, I mean, this is this is a quantum phenomenon that is well known. That observation can affect the state of certain things. Not just quantum phenomenon, to be fair. Anyway, never alone. Um, uh, the characters are... Uh, no, uh, the characters constantly feel as if they are being observed, studied, or otherwise followed. Okay, how would this how would this manifest? So I want to avoid the distraction that sense of isolation would give. So that's so social attributes. Um, I don't think anything else... No. Right now, oh, at arm's length, maybe? Yes. Uh, okay, so I want to avoid... I'm missing comma there. Uh, repeating anything I've already done. And obviously, once I, when I go through and edit this, I'll identify where I've repeated stuff. Um, but still. So... Unreliable sensors, complication to a role, to, and you'll be fed superfluous extra, uh, or extraneous if you prefer other fancy words, uh, information. Um, this I envisage as being more of a distraction thing. Uh, you can you, you still act, you still do what you want to do, but there's just that nagging feeling at the back of your head that you aren't alone. Now... I've already used complication in unreliable sensors, so I do want to st I do want to avoid using complications again. Um, so, uh, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Uh, one second, also, please bear with me. Sorry. I had an itchy nose and some dry skin to remove. Um, I kind of want to. I kind. I can't. I kind of want to see if I can make enhancement a bad thing. No, not necessarily a bad thing, but a neutral thing at, at, at worst. Uh, oh, actually, no. I mean, am I still? Re revisit this enhancement is not necessarily a good thing um, but how about this so uh, uh, the um, that constant feeling of being studied or watched or followed is obviously going to throw you off especially long term um, I, I don't want to be like hey here's a Here's a dice pool reduction, because that's just... That's the easy option. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking the easy option. I myself take the easy option quite a lot when writing mechanics. But I'm here to explain... How the mechanics can be tweaked. And how you can mess with the game system to produce your own effects. And... Therefore, I like to take the overly complicated routes. Uh, sometimes... Sometimes I hope that people are proud of me for doing this. Uh, other times I, I don't care because I have the power here. Mwah ha ha. Uh, anyway. Uh, so rather than re reducing dice pools, which would be the easiest thing to do. Uh, I kind of want to tie it into the favoured uh, favored approach um, idea. Uh, how would Easiest would be just to change it. No, 
Mm. Ooh, ooh. How about... Ah, oh, going back to the complications. No. Right. Idea. Idea, chat. Uh, so... Any dice pool involving your favorite... Well, I guess I should explain favorite approach uh, for those who may not be familiar with TC Core. So, uh, I mentioned at the start of the episode uh, that uh, your character sheet has a list of attributes and skills. Uh, skills are exactly what they sound like. There's something like 16 of them, and they cover most situations you could possibly need training or natural talent for. Attributes are... Um, they function like D&D's ability scores, or uh, I'm trying to think of another system and the associated name, and my my brain, would you believe? Completely blank. Uh, but it's uh, uh, the stats in Powered by the Apocalypse games. Things like that. Strength, dexterity, uh, stamina, are your physical attributes? Uh, okay, so uh, you have nine attributes. They're split into physical, social, and mental arenas. Uh, strength no, not strength. Might, dexterity, stamina being your physical arena. Intellect, cunning, and resolve. Nope. Why am I doing this from memory? I have the book. I have the PDF open. I'm an idiot, chat. Uh, intellect, cunning, and resolve are your mental... Um, is your mental arena. And presence, manipulation, and composure being your... Uh, Social arena. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, Otipoets, but they, they changed some of the names for StoryPath from Storyteller. Although, Wits does pretty much... Cunning and Wits are basically the same thing. Um, and then, to not like complicate matters, but to further subdivide them. So, on the couch sheet, the arenas, the arenas are presented vertically. So, Intelligence is on top of Cunning, is on top of Resolve. Might on top of dexterity on top of stamina, etc. Um, horizontally, however, there is a line marked force, a line marked finesse, and a line marked resilience. And force, finesse, and resilience are approaches. Intellect, might, and presence being your might, your force attributes. Cunning, dexterity, manipulation being your finesse attributes, and resolve, stamina, composure being your resilience attributes. Uh, and in character creation, you choose. Um, one of those attributes, uh, one of those approaches, sorry, to be your favorite approach, and you get ext an extra dot in each attribute that is in your favorite approach. So if force is your favorite approach, you just prefer brute forcing your way through problems. Head down, run at it, hope that solves the problem. Finesse equally is, you know, uh, manipulation, dexterity, just thinking uh, around the problem and approaching it from different angles. And then resilience is just letting the problem sort itself out by wearing it down. I've been far too long since I played a storyteller game. Hey, that's totally fair. Um, as I say, this is a successor to the storyteller system, so they did change some of the, the names around, um, I guess, to better suit things. Uh, so that's a, that's an explanation of favorite attributes. Favorite approaches, sorry. So what I'm thinking is when you are... Observed when you are un under pressure like that, you're going to double down on what you know. So I'm thinking one enhancement because I want to keep this like relatively simple. One enhancement on all rolls involving your favorite approach, but plus one difficulty on all rolls not involving your favorite approach, purely because you're thrown off of your game and you're retreating to what you know to 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 kind of deal with that unsettling. Um, experience, and that just makes uh, everything else harder. Uh, so when a character's dice pool includes their nope, sorry, there's no, there's no, there's no you in it in the game. You know what? I'll do it. My, my word check, my spell check right now is set to United. To UK English, uh, British English, I guess. Um, I'll set it to American English, f uh, you know, when I go through this off stream. I just don't want the document to be full of wiggly red lines. Uh, when a favorite char character's dive pool includes their favorite approach, um, 
you know what I'm just gonna do it here uh, a character please type quietly uh, gains one enhancement on that's a nice spell enhancement on any rolls including It's very difficult to type when the keyboard is at an angle and behind a microphone. Uh, their favoured approach. Uh, any other... Uh, no, that's not, that's not a good way of phrasing it. Um, uh... Because the dice pool itself doesn't have the difficulty. Um, actions that are attempted with dice pools that do not include uh, a character's... I don't know why I capitalised favoured on the line above, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, favoured approach. Um, have the... Nope, that's that's very passive. Avoid the passive. Um, the difficulty of actions that are attempted with dice balls does not include a character's favorite approach is increased. I don't know why I got rid of that. That's on me. Is increased by one. The rare and elusive double period. Uh, the characters constantly feel as if they're being zef-studded or otherwise followed. A character gains one enhancement on any rolls, including the favoured approach. The difficulty of actions that are attempted with the last pools that do not include a character's favoured approach is increased by one. Those sentences feel very fragmented, in a way, when read aloud. Uh, causing them to follow established behaviours. Um... For comfort. Character gains one enhancement on any rolls, including uh, their favorite approach. Uh, you know what? Because it's sort of linked, and because you can pry semicolons from my cold dead writer's hands, the difficulty of actions that are attempted with less balls that do not include a character's favorite approach is increased by one. That still doesn't. The sentences themselves are fine. They just feel very fragmented when read immediately together. Let's do it the other way around. Put that there for now. Um, the difficulty of actions that are attempted with dice pools that do not include a character's favorite approach is increased by one. However, if a dice pool does include a character's favoured approach. Semicolons are underused in modern English, they really are. Uh, if a dice board does include a character's favoured approach, um, character gains one enhancement for that role. There we go. I mentioned it before and I mentioned it again. When you're doing any kind of writing, whether you know community content, homebrew, professional, personal, camera's fuzzy, gosh dang it, autofocus. Um, talking aloud and reading things aloud is definitely the way to go. Uh, where's the focus checkbox? There it is. I don't know why you'd want to see my face. Uh, I have the webcam up purely because it just seems like the thing to do to I don't know, give, it's like, make the stream more personable, in a way. Uh, but hey, it's here. Uh, but there's a, I, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I'm happy enough with that. There wasn't just another complication. So, uh, looking at the time, I will start dart skill tricks there's no guarantee i'll finish it i you know i i do prefer to finish um sections if i can but there we go 
skill tricks. So, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the stream, skill tricks are ways in which a character can use a... Again, use, I don't know why I pronounced it like that. Uh, can use a skill... Um, in ways that not uh, that other characters n perhaps necessarily uh, p perhaps cannot let's say sorry wind um so i'm just looking at the list of skills uh, you know what? i'll actually open the skill tricks section of the pdf uh sorry Enigma science, culture, survival, medicine, science. So I think we'll be, we won't be we won't be dealing with science, so that's out. Uh, empathy, I suppose. A psychological horror does revolve around no small amount of psycho of uh, mental distress. Yeah, let's go with something relating to. Let's do an empathy skill trick. Um, I'm going to look at existing empathy skill tricks and see if that sparks anything. Uh, existing em empathy skill tricks. Cold reading. Small personal detail about target. Rumor has it. You just push someone's button. Uh, six degrees is about introductions and learn knowing who's who. Uh, crack in the ice, you find one in insignificant fact to break through someone's mental defenses. Okay. Uh, I kind of feel like... I want to call it mind meld because I'm a nerd. But I don't feel like that's the right feeling for what I want to do. Okay, I have an idea. I was also trying not to blink in time with the music. Um, so, uh, a shoulder to cry on. And then I believe there's like a little narrative bit. Yep. Uh, some people exude an aura of caring and trustworthiness. Uh, spend one momentum. So momentum is a... Uh, for those who don't know. Uh, momentum is a resource that is accrued generally by failing, actually. Uh, if you fail a roll, um, you get what's called a consolation, and there are a couple of different consolations, but one of them is momentum. Uh, and momentum can be spent in a couple of ways. Uh, most notably, it can be used to add dice to a pool, one for one, or it can power skill tricks, uh, and a couple of other things. Uh, I don't know why I'm stemming i'm ready to keep typing uh spend one moment momentum to uh, add your empathy uh how, how am i phrasing this empathy skill uh okay um uh as an enhancement uh to a non-empathy role. Hmm. Mm, no, that doesn't work. Um, I do want it to be spend momentum to do something. Because I want it to be like, hey, they open up to you without... Oh, okay. Uh, spend one momentum to lower... Uh, to decrease the difficulty... of a single roll um, 
uh, made to ascertain a character's mental or emotional state. Decrease the difficulty to a minimum of one. Uh, I'm including the minimum there purely because there's always the chance that you'll misread a situation. Um, and that just seems like the easiest way to... Uh, to, to model that within the game mechanics. Um, uh, I kind of want to have a an extra bit to be like, hey, they open up to you. Um, I guess just spend another moment. Uh, if uh, this roll is successful, spend another momentum to gain an understanding of the source of the characters. I guess state. Um, emotional or mental, mental or emotional state. So that's kind of like, hey, you're really upset, can I help? And then they open up to you without you rolling, just because you seem to be trustworthy. Okay, so that's more of like the positive side of things, like you're trying to help people to um, deal with the horror around them. Uh, let us suck at the skill tricks list again. Oh, survival, maybe. Integrity, I can think of a couple of things that are possible. Similarly with larceny. Athletics for running away. Oh, actually, that's an idea. Uh, what's in athletics? Uh, reflexes for combat situations. Feats of strength. Automatic parkour. Physically, physical deception of people. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I can I can I can I can handle tackle something involving um, chase sequences. Uh, where's my document gone? I keep losing the document. I've got so many windows open. Uh, so this will be athletics. And then Born to Run's kind of not punchy enough for my liking. Uh, I guess I'll put evasion. Uh, weather through training or natural talent. Uh, um, you are skilled at evading pursuers. Uh, so, I believe there are. I'm just trying to think if the if I can remember any any specific foot chase rules. 
you know, we'll just keep it generic, we'll keep it vague, so it applies to a wide variety of situations rather than the very specific um, set of circumstances. Um, whenever you are on foot and being pursued, uh, you may add your athletics skill um, as bonus dice to rolls um, related to finding hiding spots or shelter. I think that's a bit and it is something else. Is it? It is just a skill trick, in all fairness. I think that should be have a m momentum expenditure, though. Yeah. Uh, you may spend a momentum. Add your athletic sk uh, skill should be capitalized. Scale as bonus dice to rolls related to finding hiding spots. Let's say finding useful obstacles, hiding spots, or hiding spots just seems really informal, but hiding location sounds really clunky and odd. Well, I guess that's what shelter is. Useful obstacles. It's always a part that impresses me. I found writing mechanics is an added level of difficulty. Yeah, I mean, it's just a skill that you can practice. Like, I, um, way back when, uh, I made a stat block for the for the BBEG uh, for my D&D campaign, and I briefly considered using it, because the character's now at the end of the campaign, um, I briefly considered using it, and then I was like, no, I can do so much better. I've I've had, like, two years of practice at writing mechanics and monster design. I can do this better. And a, a lot of it is just, you know, practice. And, like, I have, I have this platform, and I am completely honest, like, obviously because I talk a lot to avoid dead air and to talk through my thought processes. Um, I try to be honest when I make mistakes or, uh, you know, when I'm struggling for ideas. Skill tricks are, are probably the easiest thing to try to, to do. Edges can be a bit weird because they have to fulfill that. They have to tread that fine line between being uh, a skill trick that anyone can potentially do and a supernatural ability. Because um, ed edges are mundane effects, essentially. They're just things that your character can do or has. Like, they have a library, or they're a speed reader, but it can't be, you can read too fast, or you have access to tomes of, of occult lore, because that would... Uh, library was a ter terrible example there, but, um... Like, you can't... You can't read a book in, say, like, two minutes. I mean, I know some people can, but... My point being, most people can't. Uh, and that, that level of... Not supernatural, superhuman ability. That level of ability is more like a talent. Um, and the more you practice it, the more it definitely... As I said, like any skill, you, you get better at it. Um, uh, like, the hard part for me is definitely getting something to be... To have the right balance, in a way. Um, I will most often start with the narrative that I want to achieve, because that's how my brain works. I naturally gravitate towards more narrative-heavy systems, um, and that's what I prefer. Um, and, and I definitely find it easier to approach a problem of what is the narrative that I'm trying to convey, and then once I've got that down, I will then go for the mechanic. Sometimes it works the other way around. Sometimes I'm like, right, this mechanic is cool. How can I, how can I do it? How can I leverage it? How can I I'm going to use it in the game. 
Writing uh, for Through the Breach is so much different than writing for Cult. Oh, I can imagine. Man, Through the Breach. I really want to play Through the Breach. <laughs> Less so Cult, purely because everything I've heard about Cult has been like, I probably wouldn't I'd enjoy this game, but man, Malifaux is so cool. Uh, yeah, the fluid PBTA systems. i huge fan of PBTA games. Huge, huge fan of PBTA. Um... And then sometimes, you know, I'll just get caught up on word choice. Um, I'll get stuck in my head about word choice. Uh, which is not the best thing, but... I, I have generally found that getting the right word the first time around... Obviously, I'm probably speaking to the... Preaching to the converted here, or speak preaching to the choir, or however you say the, the dang saying. Um... But getting the right word the first time around just saves you so much trouble later on down the line. Which is why I will spend half an hour trying to find the right word. Or trying to rephrase a mechanic to my liking. Because once I've got the core down, it is so much easier to edit it than to fix it in post, so to speak. Anyway. Uh, I guess a hiding, a hiding spot is shelter. Uh, finding useful obstacles. Shelter. Uh, temporary or otherwise. It's also, of course, the fact that I am aware, let's say, of my proclivity for grammatically correct but perhaps unnecessarily long sentences full of commas and semicolons and conjunctions. Um, oh, technically, the semicolon means it's not a sentence. It's a, you get my point. Um, or for, let's say, not necessarily concise language that is still technically accurate within the bounds of the framework I'm using. Uh, and getting out of my head uh, to write things down in a concise, clear manner is, is definitely something that I find trying occasionally, particularly when I'm tired or otherwise, um, you know, stressed by external factors, let's say. Like, this show is fine because I have leeway. I can overrun by up to an hour if I need to. I've never needed to. Um, and like today, we'll, I will almost certainly, well, I'll be certainly ending soon because I'll finish up the skill tricks and then recap and then do the Monday meeting notes, and then, you know, I'll end the stream, because uh, for my sense of um, completion, in a way, I like to come to the show fresh. I like to come to it without having all of the answers and all of the ideas already, because, you know, part of it is about the writing process and, and showing people who might be intimidated by the writing process that, hey, you know, I am reasonably successful in community content. I'm striving to make a career in the industry. Um, I mean, I can say that I've, I'm, I have, I have material written for books that aren't out yet. I'm allowed to say that. Not necessarily for Onyx Path, but it's there. So, like, I am making my first steps in the industry. And, you know, I struggle on occasion, quite often, thinking about things like this. And I know that my experience is not the only one of, of that occurrence. So it, it's just about showing people that anyone can do it. I mean, I'm not saying necessarily you can do it alone, but anyone can do this with the right resources, assistance, and encouragement. I'm just fortunate to know a lot of encouraging people and being involved in a lot of encouraging discord servers for rpg writers it's terrifying also it's very terrifying but still anyway uh useful obstacles shelter temporary or otherwise um or distraction you, you know what i'm gonna put this in alphabetical order uh, useful distractions, comma, obstacles, or shelter, temporary or otherwise. 
uh, that will assist in evading uh, your pursuers. I'm aware that I've repeated pursuers and evading. That's a fix and post situation. Again, the skill trick isn't something that's extremely powerful. It's just something that takes your skill to like an extra level. And I could have I could have put this in Larceny, I suppose. As a game designer, I really appreciate this very inspiring and nice to see other people in the industry. Well, yes, of course, and you know, interact with people outside of the usual channels of communication. Also, hopefully, me making an idiot of myself live and you know recorded. It makes you feel better about yourself, but I'm glad you. I'm glad you appreciate it. You know, when I when I pitched the show years ago at this point, you know, I was not sure how well it would do or how it would be received. I just hoped that it would be inspirational and helpful to people, and I'm glad. I'm glad that it is. It is at least inspiring. I, I mean, people have told me it's helpful as well, so I'm glad. I'm I'm glad I nailed both of those goals. Um. Anyway, as I said, uh, because I like to finish at the end of a section, and I've reached the end of the skill trick section, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up the stream. Um, again, I like to finish so that I don't have all the answers. So between now and next session, next stream, next session, <laughs> I'm not playing. This isn't a natural play. You fool. Um, I will prob I will think of an edge because it gives me something to start with. Uh, and avoids me having to just stare into the void for the first 10 minutes in the stream. I think gamers should see how the sausage is made, so to speak. Oh, exactly. I mean, I started the sh this show originally on my own Twitch channel as a very much as a, hey, this is how I prepare for my D&D campaign. And, you know, the early episodes are available to watch and they're extremely rough. Uh, I don't do that anymore purely because I don't have the time more than anything. Um... But it, I just want to help people get into the hobby more than anything. And I know there are people out there who want to try GMing or homebrewing or, you know, writing, but are unsure how to do it or how to get started or f feel like there is a, a barrier there that perhaps they may believe to be there because of certain popular actual plays or you know like high quality production actual plays where the pr the level of preparation that goes into the game is very obvious uh, and obviously you know if you're reading through a role playing rule book it on the surface of it seems very intimidating but hey here's the secret for you all of you aspiring designers writers out there um most role playing rule books i have discovered through reading the credit sections and through personal experience are collaborative they are a collaboration between many different writers, and you will you will have your own sections to worry about. You probably will not be responsible for the entire book unless you do what I do and you decide to write your own system. In which case, why are you doing this to yourself? Look for my system at some point whenever I finish it. Um... But yeah, as you, as you point out, the whole point was to... It, it, it is so so people can see how the sausage is made. So people who are intrigued but don't know how to get started have that have that, that resource. And as a segue, if you want to talk about any of the topics raised on the show, whether, you know, getting started in the street, any further exploration of content creation or running or GMing or anything, uh, I am on Twitter at, at Comrade Bubbles, and I'm always happy to answer questions. I do also stream on Twitch at Comrade, well, as Comrade Bubbles. Um, I don't do TTRPG stuff that often on my channel, but um, I stream three days a week. Please do consider following. Um, it's chill time. I'll happily talk about anything while I get my face wrecked by video games. Uh, however, so, um, recap for today's material for those of you who may have missed the, the start of the stream. Uh, I, you know, we I, I discussed uh, scene-wide optional mechanics and skill tricks. You know, I've written 
you know, I, I will subtract two because of skill tricks. I've written this stream 280 words in two hours, uh, in an hour and a half. I just want to point out that is this is an atypical experience. I can knock out 2,500 words in an afternoon, um, if not more. Um, because I'm talking things through, because I'm answering questions, because I'm distracting myself more than anything. Um, it is. It is. It. Um, it does extend artificially extend the writing process. Like this, this whole document it, right now is you, is at six six thousand two hundred fifteen words. Uh, it's taken ten streams. I could have done that in three days, easily. Um, but. I, I, it's important to me that you all see how it works behind the screen, hence the name of the screen, hence the name of the show. Uh, it's all about taking the chance of keeping at it. Wrote a plug for Third Eye Games and I dare to myself, led to several games, pen drive pulls, etc. Exactly, like I, um, I submitted material to a couple of publishers, you know. Uh, I will say, if you want to submit material, please read everything on the submission page. Um, some publishers will be happy for one submission uh, for, like, everything they make, which... I did for a company and you know got hired for a different game um, some com some publishers will like one submission per game line to, to show that you can that you know that you understand the mechanics of that game line uh, I also did that also got hired for a different game but equally um, I mean I can say this because I'm pretty sure I've had I'm pretty sure I can say what book I'm on, but uh, on its path project pro product, and I've never written for the system before. But hopefully, I'm assuming it was through this show demonstrated my understanding of mechanics and abil ability to to mess with mechanics and produce the desired result. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, so please do, if you are submitting, like read the re submission requirements. Um, obviously, it work counts against you if you submit incorrect material uh yes anyway back to the recap so yes 282, 282 words today it's been an artificial extended process i don't think that you will write slowly you'll find your own groove um i know that i can right now write about 2500 words a day on a good day um and like you'll find your own speed and that's totally fine everyone writes at different speeds everyone passes information at different speeds everyone thinks things through at different speeds if you were to run this show you might get through twice as much stuff as I do or half as much stuff as I do and that's fine content you know as long as you were working with, to your deadlines content takes as long as it takes and um, for someone like me who like I try to do everything I'd spin too many plates uh, it, it was a hard lesson to learn but I learned it the hard way anyway uh, Positive news, uh, if you missed the start of the stream, um, Monday meeting notes, uh, I will do my my swift outro recap. Uh, the Monday meeting notes just starts off with the presence of chat is distracting. Also that, some of you more than others, you know who you are. Um, sorry, some of my, my Twitch channel regulars are in this chat as well. Uh, yeah, it starts, starts with the history of Scion 2nd Edition, which is pretty cool. Some artwork, because it's Scion Month this month. Uh, Exalted ex Exigence will be on Indiegogo rather than Kickstarter. Words on the page, words on the page. Sounds right, but the basic truth. Exactly. Like, if you have a project, uh, if you have a project, and at the end of the day, you've got more words on the page than you had at the start of the day, you're succeeding. Um, Exalted Ex Exigence being a splat book for 3rd edition Exalted will be the next crowdfunder. It will be on Indiegogo rather than Kickstarter. The main difference being Indiegogo takes the money when you pledge. Um, however, it is still set up like the Kickstarter model. If you, uh, if the product does not, if the campaign does not fund, you get your money back. Um, that's important. Uh, Honest Path have some experience on Indiegogo through I, again, I believe it was Technocracy Reloaded, but if you don't want to take a chance on Indiegogo and are confident the product will fund, uh, back a, kit will, uh, a back a kit campaign will be available for pre-ordering the material. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, the Silent Cell continues this week. Uh, the core books remain 10% of their listed price of the PDF. 
highly recommend Scion. It's a fantastic system. Um, my plan for the next season of the show is more Scion content, but we'll, plans change, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then next week, I assume the other Scion content on Drive-Thru RPG will go on sale. Um, so if there is any Scion book you wish to pick up, PDF that is not currently 10% of its normal price, it's probably just worth waiting until next until the, the, the second half of the sale starts. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Um, if you have liked the show and the discussions of mechanics, um, in about an hour and 20 minutes at noon Eastern, uh, I'll get this the right way around, Danielle Lawson and Eddie Webb uh, are, are doing their story path system show just called Lunch and Crunch, where they talk about mechanics and stuff. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the topic is this week. Uh, I know previous topics have handled very similar to this, like how you can twist mechanics to for genre work or for the importance of playtesting or getting started in, in the industry. And, um, you know, it's always a fun time. Um, if you are interested in any of the uh, any of the schedule stuff, uh, I will let the the post and pre roll the post roll roll a couple of times, but I believe it's the offline screen for the channel anyway. Uh, you can now play Scion completely on Roll Twenty um, with sheets and compendium information. I'm hoping that eventually that comes to Foundry because I'm more of a Foundry fan. But I'm ha happy to play Scion in whatever way I possibly can. Uh, on sale this week is 10th anniversary merch on the Honest Path Redbubble store and also Trinity Continuum Aberrant novella called Panopticon by Lauren Roy. Um, the Onyx Path Virtual Con is happening 10th to, 10th to 12th of June and uh, the convention section of the Monday meeting notes has a whole slew of graphics with panel times and game times for them for those sweet, sweet stream games. Uh, I'm not involved in it, but on the Sunday at 4pm, there is a community content fundamentals panel that I'm going to try and catch on YouTube because unfortunately I'm busy that weekend. Uh, but if you've enjoyed the show, obviously that's kind of what the show is about anyway. So go and listen from people who do it better than I do and know more about what they're talking about. Uh... I realise I put out the wrong link earlier. That's on me. I need to update the link in my notes. Uh, so earlier at the start of the show, I, I sent I, I posted the link for like the complete project timeline, um, and it was last month. It was March instead of April's. Click on the link I just I just dropped in chat for the complete project timeline. Uh, the Monday meeting notes only includes uh, updates to that. It only shows you what's what's moving through the process. Um, but as a whistle stop tour uh, Trinity Continuum Anima Jumpstart Cascades in Final Draft Silent Tasty Bit Making History Modern Manuscript Approval Silent Dragon Jumpstart Editing uh, Exigent TC Adventure Exalted 3 Adversaries uh, W20 Apoc Apoc Apocalyptic Record TC Aeon Mission Statements Roll in Art Direction uh, Aberrant Novas Worldwide Trinity Continuum Aberrant Novas Worldwide Sound Masks of the Mythos Sound Dragon Both in Layout uh, Dead Man's Rust is improving both the book and the uh, virtual tabletop assets. So on demigods and indexing, um, as well as the back of PDF is out. Uh, Squeaks in the deep screen book bookmarks are all in various stages of app press. Uh, Paranormalist handbook print on demand proofs on the way. Hunter the Vigil 2E uh, book and screen are in a couple of um, uh, stages and that press tells of the private is getting its page XX problem sorted. M20 operative dossier is awaiting errata. TC aberrant Turat novellas uh, print on demand proof is on the way. Uh, Trinity Continuum Assassins is awaiting errata and the Panopticon, as I said, is on sale on Wednesday. Now, if you have been interested in the show, but perhaps missed the start, uh, you can, in fact, if you subscribe to the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash onyxpath, uh, you can watch it immediately you know as soon as I hit stop stream um, if you are not subscribed and you can subscribe with 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 a prime gaming subscription if you have one uh, if you have a, an Amazon Prime account you can link that to your prime account uh, to your twitch account to get a prime gaming subscription which is one free tier one sub every month you have to renew it um, manually 
uh, but it allows you to choose where that free subscription goes and the streamer of the channel um, gets all of the same benefits so uh, as a tier one subscription and you as the subscriber get all of the same benefits of, uh, of the tier one subscription including that week's exclusivity for video on for the video on demand on the channel after that week is up uh, i don't know what time limit the twitch channel is set to because i haven't looked and i don't know if i have that information um as a sub broadcaster i think it's called um or moderator or whatever uh but Obviously, Twitch VODs are deleted after like, 30 or 60 days, depending on your settings. Um, these videos go up on my YouTube channel. I don't have a fancy link. You will have to manually search for uh, Comrade Bubbles uh, and then behind the screen, uh, the behind the screen playlists. Um, everything goes up. Uh, all of these episodes go up on my YouTube channel, not the Onyx Paths. Um, they're nice enough to let you know to let me keep the material. Uh, so if you don't want to watch this or any of the previous episodes of the season, this is the 10th episode, or any of the previous seasons, I've got Scion, I've got Scarred Lands, and I feel like there's another one I'm missing. Mortals Chronicles of Darkness, there we go. Uh, those are all up on my YouTube channel. You can watch the design process in excruciating, mind-numbing detail and just listen to me drone on and on and on about things I probably don't know as much about as I make out. Thumbs up. Uh, as I said, I can, I'm also available on Twitch and Twitter, Camera Bubbles. Uh, I'm also on the Onyx Path uh, fan server, uh, fan Discord server that Nightbot has recently linked to uh, as Comrade Bubbles. Um, I try to remain consistent. Uh, and I, I, I lurk there, but I will occasionally I will occasionally answer questions and make pithy comments where possible. Don't sell myself short. Uh, I have to, otherwise my ego will grow too large and it shall block out the sun. Also, I have crippling self-esteem issues, so I'm going to sell, sell myself short. But I'm aware of them, so that's progress, right? Uh, I uh, This show is uh, bi-weekly or fortnightly if you prefer. I'm aware that not everywhere in the world uses Fortnite to mean something other than a Battle Royale game. Um, so, all being well, the next show will be the 24th of the month, and we're just going to continue with the psychological horror genre stuff. Uh, as I said... Uh, last stream I think it was uh, I do have an idea for a, for a bonus section to the book still not sure if I'll do it on stream or not um, I did I think I did reveal it in that stream but um, I'm not going to tell you you're going to have to go and watch the last episode and let me know if I did reveal it in the YouTube comments I think that's everything sorry I'm just mental checklist I think that's everything. I mean, obviously, if you have the money available, please do consider um, joining one of the games at the Virtual Con. 50% uh, goes to the GM, 40% goes to charity, and 10% goes to the start playing, I assume, uh, and or Onyx Path. Uh, so it's all, it's, all, it's all money for a good cause. Um, if I've mentioned anything here that you'd like to discuss further, as I said, I'm... Always happy to discuss role-playing stuff on Twitter. I'm always happy to discuss role-playing stuff in my uh, Twitch chat, whilst distracting me from whatever I'm playing. Um, and I will, in fact, be streaming in about half an hour over on my own, ch over on my own channel. Um, and I'd love to see you there if you have the time. Equally, if you don't, obviously, totally fine. Uh, I understand that people are here for the content and have busy days outside of this. Uh, and I'm just grateful that you're here and, 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 and interacting and, and being part of this great community because I have the time to get misty-eyed. Um, like, I've been doing this now for 57 episodes. Well, I find my notes. Sorry, I was trying to find my notes. 57 episodes, um, which has let... It's allowed me to see the, the, the Onyx Path Twitch community grow and, um, you know, just being a part of that, however small, with a non weekly non-traditional show that is at probably not the best time for most people um yeah it makes me feel like i'm con contributing to the, to the hobby we are in year three we are um i can tell you actually when my first stream was because i i make a note of the date every time the first stream was recorded on the 3rd of september 2019 <sighs> wow
If I'm streaming on that day, I might do something special. I don't know. We'll find out. I feel like three years of the show deserves something, though. It's the best time for Europe. Thanks, Alan. Just, you know, mid-afternoon. Mid, mid uh, yeah, I was aiming for that sweet spot of European mid-afternoon and American breakfast. That was a lifetime ago. That was, you know, the before times. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap up because I could just hang out with cool people and chat for quite some time. And I'm aware that I have other stuff to do today and there's other stuff on the channel today. So I'll be in chat for about five minutes or so while the post roll rolls. Just happy to chill talk nonsense again uh but hopefully you've enjoyed the show hopefully you come back in two weeks time hopefully you follow me elsewhere on the internet as well that'd be nice uh and um yeah my traditional sign off being please pet your pets tell them they're good pets and also uh, from me to you and your loved ones please do stay safe please do stay healthy please do stay wholesome i'll see you next time i will let the post roll roll a couple of times so that you can Enjoy the sweet, sweet promotional graphics for all of the shows on the channel and elsewhere. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you.